everybody, welcome back to the House of Fi. I am Wendy and this is my better half, Curtis, who is joining us today because we have an awesome celebration, a mile marker, a milestone to share with you guys that we are so excited to share. Babe, we hit $100,000 in our awesome. savings accounts. That's and, very isn't awesome. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So if you guys don't know our story, I'll link a little bit of that above, but three years ago, we were $1 million in debt and we had zero savings. And when I say zero, I mean like zero. zero. <laughs> <laughs> so stick around for about six seconds and we'll be right back. All right, everybody, again, I am Wendy, and this is... Curtis. And we are together, the House of Fi, and we are so glad that you're here. And if you are new here, welcome to our house. We are all about helping moms and dads on the road to financial independence, to build wealth, dump debt, and just really kickstart their life and provide generational wealth to their children mm. and we that's why we're so excited to talk about the fact that we hit a huge milestone this past past week yes. and that was one hundred thousand dollars in liquid assets in our retirement accounts and our savings account combined and that's huge yeah it definitely is because i mean i just can't imagine just going back at least what three years yeah three years we were just looking at our bank account saying, how are we going to get to a point where we have enough, you know, moving forward to sustain our, <laughs> our living? Right. Well, not only our living, I mean, we had a lot of really big goals. We wanted to um, retire, which was an impossibility at mm. that point. We wanted to leave something to our children, which we didn't have anything. And we had a million dollars in debt. And yes. so... So the financial independence community, when we found the community, it was huge. It was mm. a light bulb moment for, for me first and then for Kurt. Yeah. And, and we have a couple different um, articles and podcast episodes where he talks about him coming to the fire movement. But what we want to really talk about today is how we got to that $100,000 in savings in three years and this you know huge amount of debt. If you haven't signed up for Robinhood yet, I have a link down below. If you sign up, I get a free stock and you get a free stock and we all win and it's totally free. Mm. And what I love about Robinhood and, is that they allow um, VTI, which I love Vanguard. Don't oh, go to yeah. Vanguard. Love it. <laughs> VTSAX, but what's cool about the Robinhood app is that you can get VTI, which is the equivalent of um, VTSAX, but it um, you don't need three thousand dollars. You can open up an account with as little as a hundred bucks. So that links down below. So be sure to check that out. So you get your free stock and I get my free stock. All right, babe. So let's talk about how we were able to do this one hundred thousand dollars in three years while starting with a million dollars mm. worth of debt. Well, one is in our four hundred three b, and the other one is in our four fifty seven accounts. Right, so Kurt is very fortunate. He is a teacher, um, but what's cool is that um, with a lot of public service type jobs, so not just teachers, but like police officers, fire department, um, nonprofit hospitals, there's a ton of public service um, sort of um, jobs and careers where you not only get access to a 403B, which is like a 401K, but you also get access to a 457 plan which what that means and why that's so beneficial is that you get to almost double dip and just automatically double your potential mm -hmm. savings so whereas you might have a annual limit of I think it's it's either 18,500 mm -hmm. or 19,000 now I think it's 19,000 but instead of just being able to max out at 19,000 you get to double that to 38,000, which is huge, yeah, huge. And especially for people like us who are maybe behind the ball with their savings, mm -hmm. it gives us um, an ability to catch up, which is what we're really trying to do. Yes. So we're contributing to both of those. In addition, we're contributing to Kurt's um, state um, retirement, retirement plan, which mm -hmm. I think that's about um, almost 10% of, of your pre-tax 
um, check. So yeah. we have those three accounts and that's the bulk of where we put um, most of our um, savings, but we also have then our own emergency fund where mm -hmm. um, we've been uh, able to build that up very wow. recently, which is good. We need that emergency fund, especially yeah. in times like this. So that's where we keep the bulk of our money. You might have a different scenario. There's tons of options of where you can put your money for retirement. There's um, IRAs. Um, there's, again, the 401ks. Um, if you're self-employed, you can do a solo 401k as well as um, uh, the other option is a SEP IRA. So be sure to investigate what vehicles you have and talks with your talk with your tax professional because certain um, types of accounts are going to be more beneficial for you. And then there's the after tax accounts that you can put your money in. If you're going with a money market account or like a savings account, um, those are typically not going to earn earn very high interest rates. But there are a few out there like Capital One. I think Ally Bank has one. Mm where you can get just a little bit higher, um, like just under 2%, but those are for the money that, like if you need to get to it, you can get to yeah. it really quickly. Um, and then there's also like your Robinhood account or Vanguard or Fidelity, where you can also invest in after-tax accounts just simply to have um, this other area where you can, yeah. you, this other bucket of money, essentially. So before we found the financial independence community, um, it was, in our minds at least, it was hard to save because we yeah. always felt like we couldn't afford it. And so I know that a lot of us, when we're living paycheck to paycheck, it's a scary thing to take from that because we feel in our minds that we just don't have enough to go around. Mm -hmm. And I'd always heard people saying, you know, pay yourself first, pay yourself first. And that was just a scary mindset to get through. But I think it really is one of the keys for us as far as how we've been able to save so much and save it so quickly. Yeah. So automatic deductions, mm -hmm. um, all of Kurt's are done before we even see his paycheck. Yeah, so I, I think the out of sight, out of mind is one of the key things that helped us in the long run. And, you know, as we continue to build on it, it, it just became a lot easier mm -hmm. to add to it and to continue just adding to it. And here's the thing is that if you go ahead and you make a commitment, let's say you start out with, you know, $200 a month and you do it for a couple months and you're feeling like I really need, that's just too much. I'm not able to make it with that. You can always change that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good thing to challenge yourself just a little bit. And that's one of the commitments that we have made is that every quarter we're increasing the contributions because right now we're at about half of our capacity mm -hmm. for what we can put into um, the 403B and the 457. Um, so every quarter we inch that up a little bit and we see where we are. We see if we're able to cut our expenses to meet that. And then the other thing is that realize that this is pre-tax dollars. So mm -hmm. if you're increasing it by $200, the effect on your paycheck is not necessarily $200. It's probably much less than that, a percentage less than that. So um, that's another thing to consider when you're thinking about what you can afford to put in your retirement. I just think it's our commitment uh, mm -hmm. to increase our, our, our savings on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. on a, you know, quarterly basis. And, you know, the, one of the biggest things that I see, I take out of it, and, and my point is we sit down and talk. When, when, when we sit down and talk and see where we're at and see what we can do moving forward, it just helps us stay committed more and more. Right. And focusing, we share the same goal. So our commitment is something that we've we've agreed upon. We mm -hmm. know what the overall why is, and it's a common why for both of us. We want to leave something to our children. We want to create a different family tree for our nuclear family. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a vision that we share. So we're committed to that. But the other side of that is just a commitment to saving in general. Um, it was something that we just decided we could not put off any longer. Like we were 46 when we found the financial independence 
community. We're 49 now, <laughs> and like we're on the second half of our lives. Yeah. We don't have any more time. We're not <laughs> getting any younger. So we are committed to doing this, and like it's just a non negotiable in our lives anymore. We have to save. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing is that, you know, make these things automated. If you're not able to do like a pre tax um, on your payroll, distribution to your retirement accounts, then set up a, an automatic withdrawal with your bank or with your investment provider so that you set it and forget it. It just becomes another bill. Just like we have our auto insurance deducted automatically or our cell phones or whatever, have this savings automatically deducted. So it's just done. It's not upon you to remember to do it and then maybe something else grabs your attention or you spend. Um, so I think those are about the four or five ways and the four or five yeah. keys that have been crucial for us to get to this point of $100,000. And I'm so looking forward to seeing, everyone says that the first $100,000 is the hardest. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see. I'm excited <laughs> to, um, one of the things that we're going to be starting every month now uh, is sharing with you our net worth updates. Yes. So we started tracking uh, our net worth about a year after we started the financial independence journey. We started it in 2016, but I started tracking it in May of 2017. So in the next video, in just a few days, what we're gonna do is our net worth update, and I'm gonna share you know, what are all of the numbers involved? You know, not in addition to the $100,000 that we've been able to say, save, you know, what is the breakdown on the debt that we've gotten rid of, as well as how has our, our net worth increased in that amount of time? And I think there's going to be some surprises Surprise. there, yeah. <laughs> as well as like just some encouragement for some of you who are maybe in our situation where you're maybe at a point of feeling fairly helpless about your situation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our mission is to give you guys hope. Yes. Um, you know, we were in a pretty hopeless spot and now I think we're just really excited about our future. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for joining me, babe. Oh yeah, anytime. <laughs> you gonna come back on the next video? Yes, I will. Okay. All right guys, well, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.